stretch. <sighs> okay. So, my talk today is share the dream. Let's just take a moment and think about that. Share the dream. What does that feel like for you? Share the dream. See, last week we learned that the mental equivalents are the key to our success, yes? Yeah. Assisting each one of us in creating a life that we desire to live. Mental equivalent is when we picture our life experiences we desire before they show up. Which sounds like fantasy, doesn't it? it sounds like make-believe. But in truth, as children, when we would make-believe about whatever it was, we were creating the dream for our lives. Some people will say that this is foolishness. That was one thing my mother would say to me. Oh, that's so foolish. That's not real. And they'd say, be real. Accept what you've been dealt. I was never one of those. <laughs> accept what you've been dealt. When you know and accept that the power and the light and the love of pure spirit lives in you, we can share the dream that lives in our hearts. And I'm going to, that's what we're going to talk about today. Good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our founder, Ernest Holmes, said, we cannot demonstrate what is beyond our ability to mentally picture. If we can't picture the future that tomorrow being filled with joy or the tomorrow being everything always works out for me. I have that in my car. I wrote that and I pasted it in my car. Everything always works out for me. Now, it's taken me about five times going back to the dealer, but I'm finally going to get really good tires on Tuesday because everything always works out for me. You see? We don't have to get mad about it. We just have to hold the picture, the mental picture of what it is we desire. Mental equivalence asks us to have a clear picture of what we wish to have present in our lives. Well, I kept driving that car and the, the, it, it was unsteady. And the tires make a noise. It's not comfortable. Everything always works out for me and for you. But again, we are the ones that create the picture, the idea, the dream that we are to walk into because you see our life is unlimited if we believe it is. When we open to that dream and that vision, our time of joys and support, when we get up here and we light these candles, is an example of that dream, that desire to have something greater for our family, for ourselves, for our friends. We get up and we speak what it is we would like to have happen. And it's really easy for you to see that taking place for my child, for, uh, for my son, for Susan's son, and for everybody else that has been spoken here today. It's easy for us. Well, of course we want that. We want them to have this good job and this good life. Because this room is filled with our friends who will hold that point of faith for us. Yes? Yes. Yeah. And it's easy, isn't it? Yeah. Not always so easy to do it for ourselves. So that's why, in my opinion, this faith-based community has such value for each and every one of us. And we agree with the request that everybody makes and see it for them. Yes? Yes. Because it's easy. I can know that for Susan's son, as she knows it from mine. It is easy for others to envision our success and the success of our loved ones. It is easy for you to see the health of others and the health and success for us healing in our affairs and in our lives. This is all about seeing the solution before we have evidence of that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Because we know together that there is a power for good opening all the doors to each and every one of us to express and to experience a life greater than we ever thought possible. Mine certainly has been. Just from that, that thinking, that belief, that idea, the solution is in the present moment. The solution is how we believe about that. We can say it, but if we don't say, I, I know this, I accept this. Our job is to believe it and to believe it is possible. So what do we have to do to have that? We have to get our fears and our doubts and our unbeliefs behind us. And we literally have to say to that way of thinking, hey, that's not true. The light of spirit, the love of pure spirit within me that desires my greatest good is more powerful than my fears, my doubts, and my unbeliefs. Yes? Yeah. yeah. And we have to each be willing to give our dreams life. Give your dreams life. What is it that you desire to have created in your life? Because you see, spirit, the spirit of life, whatever you call it, God's spirit, the beloved, the divine, always says yes. It's one of the things the practitioners will tell you. The law says yes. As you believe, so shall it be. So we want to be careful what we say yes to. Our fears, our doubts, or are we going to say yes to the dream? I have no idea how that's going to happen. But I know that if I place that dream, that belief, that idea in the mind of God that is very present in my life and in your life, that will happen. So I'm here today. You know, I got to visit the, the Redwoods. And I was in heaven because it, I told you this before, at eight years old, I was preaching in the Redwoods at our cabin. I would be in the Redwoods all summer long. And it was beautiful. And this burned out big Redwood, my father built a bench and all our friends who would come up to our cabin on Sunday morning, they had to go to church. And they came to church and they had to give money. And then I'd take the money and I'd put it in a special box and I'd take it back to my church when we returned home. Now, that sounds really cool, doesn't it? And then when it came time as I grew older and, and got called to the ministry, I said, no, not me. <laughs> That's so funny. So be willing to give your dreams life and say when it's time, this is what will happen. And when it was time for me to step up and be a minister, it happened. It wasn't time when I was fighting it. It was time later on. And I was more ready for it. Martin Luther King Jr. was advised not to rock the boats by his associates. But King had a dream. And he had the ability to plant the seeds in the minds of those who listened and who felt how his dream would feel when it was manifested. That's the other piece of the, of, of the mental equivalent. How will it feel when it manifests? What is your dream? What is it that you might be eh, not too willing to speak out about? Where you go, well, that's not possible. What is your dream? Take a moment. How will it feel when the dream that you have manifests? Expand. Expand your thinking. Expand the feeling. Let it happen. It's up to you. Gandhi's friends told him the British government would never release its stronghold on India. Gandhi didn't believe that. 
Yet both Gandhi and Martin Luther King remain firm in their convictions, their visions, their dreams of a greater future for their country, for their people. They didn't give up. Even when Gandhi was threatened, he didn't give up. Same with Martin Luther King. What is it that you desire for your life? What is it that you desire for this community? I'm giving pause here so that you can allow it to percolate in your own mind because that's what's important in my opinion here. This is about me, it's about you. What's your dream? See, when we live from faith and possibilities, knowing there is a power for good that supports each and every one of us. This power isn't just for me or Reverend Suzanne or practitioner Susan. You don't even have to be a faith-based person. This power is for every one of us to use. Yes? Yes. Yeah. So align with your dream. Align with the dream for the good of all. And push, push and keep your faith high. Okay, here's a big one for you, spirit. Make it happen. If not this, then something greater. That's what I say all the time. This is where, what I see, but maybe there's something even greater than I can ever imagine. Because you see, our perspective and our ideas and our beliefs are more limited. God's guidance is much greater. And stand your ground. Not in anger, but in love. Stand your ground and anchor your love in the solution. Anchor your love in the dream and stand in the knowledge that with God, all things are possible. It took five times to get the manager to finally say, would you just, just give her whatever she wants? I wasn't angry, I just said, this doesn't work for me. And they kept trying, and they kept trying. Bless their hearts. <laughs> if you desire changes to take place in your life, in your country, in your neighborhoods, we have to overcome our doubts and our fears, especially today, in my opinion. We have to deepen our faith. We have to see the solution and hold to that solution that rights for all people. That a world that works for everyone, what does that look like? It looks like nothing pushing against them, including my own beliefs, yes? Yes. yes. So I have to clean up my stuff. Yeah. It's better for me, it's healthier. See, the power to transform each of our lives, the lives of our loved ones, the lives of our community, the lives of our country lives within each and every one of us. You know, it was a really funny thing. When, when COVID hit, one of the prayers that I started doing was praying for a vaccine. I prayed daily, every day, for a vaccine that would come quicker than what they were saying it would come, and it did. Now, some of the people who came to this church didn't like that. But I believe in anything and everything that supports us in greater good and greater health and greater harmony is that that needs to take place. I don't care what anybody's beliefs are about that. They can choose to use it, and they have or not. But it's looking like it's really served all of us, doesn't it? Just like I can remember as a child, polio horrified our families. And I have friends who had polio as children, and they're still dealing with the ramifications of it. But we don't have that anymore. All of it is required is our willingness our willingness to hold fast to the vision, to the dream, to the belief. No matter what anybody says or does. 
Just because some people didn't like that I put that prayer out doesn't mean I stopped praying. Do you see? We can't dictate what that's going to be, but we can dictate the greater good of all. Keep repeating it. Is it? Keep repeating it. God's got this. <clears throat> Faith and trust is our key is our key to the one source of our good because the one source of our good is ready and waiting for directions. We got to use God to have God be used in our life. It's part of being in this human body is to use the source of our life. We are being asked to strengthen our faith and possibilities that God's Spirit gushes in, gushes in unimpeded, never running dry. God's never going to say to you, you know what, I gave you that new car yesterday, you know, the list is done. You're finished. Not going to happen. So now I, I'm going to invite us now to take an opportunity to speak our dream out into this room. So everybody take a breath. What is it? What is it that you're willing to speak out into this room with no solution right now, but just allow the people in this room to hold that for you, to up-level. What I'm willing to do this morning is to speak for this community. I'm going to start with that. Do you want to write? Sure. I know. I'll go around with the, uh, the thing. One of the things I'd like to speak for this community is a full house. We'll do it simple. Just full house. Okay? Like we've had, and we know this. Like I've said before, we're the core, we're the core of this community. We know what a full house is like. We know what dinners are like when we don't have enough tables for all the people that come to dinner. Yes? Yes. yes. Okay, dinners, dinners together. That the money just keeps flowing into this community and from that we send it out to do good. Yes? Yes. Money flows. Going up to the Redwoods last week, I would love to, Rick and I fell in love with that area. Um, we have a sense of, we would either like to eventually live up there or have a cabin up there so that we can visit it more often because we were really refreshed and renewed. So refreshed and renewed by a cabin in the Redwoods, okay? All right, so you guys got an idea? I'm gonna take Reverend Suzanne's mic and, uh, we're not going to put you on the camera. You do the bottom one, Susan? Or the top one? Top. Top. Okay. Anybody? No. No? We're not going to put the camera on you, so just <laughs> say what it is. I'm working on my second book, and I see the title coming through in the book, and then I get this finished. Because it's okay. back from the editor, I'm going to do it. Okay. Second book. You got something? Um, I'm looking for a career change. Career change. Got one? Well, sure. I, I would like to see us all be transformed into something when we walk down the street. They want what we've got. Mm -hmm. And the only way they're going to get that is to come here and get it. Yeah. Amen. I like that. No. Uh, Rick. I'd like to have coffee and tea again in church. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. You don't have to have some, but it helps. I like family harmony and respect. Yes. I like that. Do you have something? Mm -hmm. In the bigger picture, uh, a nation healed with loving kindness. Amen. Amen. Do you have something? Yes. Um, financial security. Yes. See, one, what's good for one is good for all. Yes. Do you have something? Unity. Great. Unity. I like that. Do you have something? Compassion for our fellow human beings. Yes. Ah, oh, amen. Boop, boop, sorry. 
Facebook. A husband that can walk. Oh, yes. Yes. Ooh, Robert Suzanne. Do you have something? I was thinking about um, not only filling our center, but that people are changed when they walk in and out of these doors, like Reverend John said, that, that we got something everybody could benefit from and somehow getting that message out. Yeah, good, get our message out. Okay, everybody take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Do you all know that this is all possible? Yes. What? Yes. 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 Great, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Reverend Suzanne. This is how you do it. Next week I'm going to talk about how we can pray for ourselves in a more powerful way. So you want to be here for that. I'm so grateful to Susan and I. She's going to start this week, this month, doing Science of Mind magazine. And, and if you haven't done it, this month is probably one of the best months to do uh, to look at the Science of Mind magazine because all of the dailies are written by things that Ernest Holmes read and wrote years ago, of course. And, uh, and so I'm going to close today with, with what he had to say. I guess it was on the, the 4th. This has been really powerful for me and I've gotten some really good information from it and you're going to get more of that next week. But thank you, Susan and I, for wanting to do this. She's going to do this once a month, so you want to mark that on your calendar that the second Sunday of the month it will be Science of Mind Sunday. So that you just have a, a time to really get steeped in some of our principles, okay? So Ernest says, why shouldn't you feel that you have a silent partner that can receive inspiration and guidance from the supreme intelligence? You have a silent partner. All of these things are possible when we place it in that partnership. Now, just how should we proceed in drawing on this intelligence in everything we do? He goes on to say, first we must believe, we must believe that such an intelligence exists. And then we must make our minds as a channel through which it can flow. I don't know how this is going to happen, but I know that the spirit of life in me, through me, has the answers. Yes? Yes. yes. For there is no use in catching inspiration from on high unless you actually bring it down into your everyday living. So, we want to see ourselves as this funnel bringing down into our existence the greater good that we're desiring to have take place. Make sense? Yes. Good. Okay, so I, uh, and you're going to hear this more next week. I'm going to uh, pray us out now before you do the music. And I'm going to do the prayer differently. And I want you to really listen to that. So everybody just take a breath. Knowing and accepting that there's only one life, one power, one all-loving, all-nurturing presence. By whatever name, God, the infinite, the divine, the beloved. This is what I know to be true for and in the Foothill Center for Spiritual Living. I know that this community is vital and alive and it has a very essence and presence of pure spirit walking with each and every person who comes into this community. They come in the grace and the situations is blessed and lifted up and we become beacons of light, each and every one of us, to the outer community, drawing greater to this community because we have so grounded in our faith and glorified and blessed by the God within us. So with a grateful heart for this and so much more that is taking place in the life of the Foothill Center for Spiritual Living, I give thanks. And I allow it to be so. And if you're in agreement with me, and please say with me, and so it is. Amen.